Welcome to Basketball Cinema, where we revisit the most important and iconic games in NBA history. I'm Jay Canada, and today we're looking at a 2021 regular season matchup between the Phoenix Suns and Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, yeah, this is this is an NBA Finals preview video, in, in case that wasn't already obvious. Okay, the 2021 playoffs have epitomized the old sports cliche that winning a championship is a war of attrition. Unlike any year in recent memory, this edition of the NBA playoffs has featured series impacting injury after series impacting injury. We've joked as fans for the past few weeks that the finals would feature the two teams left standing without catastrophic injury, and even that isn't true. At the time of this recording, we're still unsure about the status of Giannis Antetokounmpo for game one of the finals and beyond after he sustained a knee injury of Game 4 of the East Finals. But for the sake of being positive and for offering any form of prediction for the series, let's put on our wishful thinking caps today and assume at some point we'll see the two-time MVP in action during the Finals. For the Milwaukee Bucks, the road to the NBA Finals has been a long and winding one. Over the past three seasons, the Bucks have won 71% of their regular season games, have won a combined five playoff series, and have consistently been one of the league's most dominant statistical teams. After falling short in 2019 and 20 with more or less the same core leading the way, the Bucks decided to sing Hey Drew prior to this season, acquiring former All-Star Drew Holiday from the New Orleans Pelicans. We'll chat a bit more about Drew later on in this video, but alongside Giannis and Chris Middleton, presents a legit big three for the Suns to handle if all three are on their game. Milwaukee was able to roll all over reigning Eastern Conference champs the Miami Heat in Round 1. Round 2 presented NBA fans with what many thought would be the most iconic series of the playoffs, as the Bucks took on the loaded Brooklyn Nets. Despite a heroic effort from Kevin Durant, the Nets did succumb to Milwaukee, a series that was heavily affected by Brooklyn losing Kyrie Irving to injury and James Harden being limited by a strained hamstring. Now this isn't me trying to tear down the Bucks in any way. As mentioned, this season is simply a different battle and durability has been and is still playing a huge role. Giannis also gave us the best playoff series of his career against the Nets, dropping 32 points, 13 rebounds per game. After surviving that series, Milwaukee met Atlanta and despite losing their lead horse, took down the Scrappy Hawks in six games, Chris Middleton leading the way, scoring 24 points a game. And that's how Milwaukee finds themselves in the big dance for the first time since 1974. For the Suns, meanwhile, it's also been a journey, albeit a quite different one. Despite enjoying a few successful eras as a franchise, including the 90s with Charles Barkley and the 2000s with Steve Nash, Phoenix has never won a championship in their existence. And their arrival in the finals this year is like manna from heaven for Phoenix fans, as the team had been riding a 10 season missed playoff streak. Of course, the silver lining to being a perennial lottery team is having the ability to build a strong young core. And boy, did the Suns do that. Eventually. Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, and Cameron Johnson were all lottery picks by the Suns. Mikel Bridges too, as he was acquired on draft day through trade. And that's four-fifths of this deadly Phoenix core. Just prior to the start of the season, the Suns added the finishing piece to that young core, trading for veteran point god Chris Paul. CP3 averaged 16 and 9 and took this Suns roster to new heights, as they finished second in the West, with Chris finishing fifth in MVP voting for his efforts. Phoenix would beat the defending champion Lakers in six games, running them off the court in games 5 and 6 after the Lake Show lost Anthony Davis to injury. They were then able to sweep MVP Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets who were without Jamal Murray due to injury, and finally outlasted the Kawhi Leonard-less LA Clippers in the West Finals. Again, please let me reiterate, I am not being a hater of the Bucks or the Suns when pointing out these injuries. It's just an unfortunate part of the story of this season. Also a part of the story is that Chris Paul has battled a bum shoulder and Devin Booker a battered nose. I'll point out just one last time here that, as I'm making this video, Giannis' health status is up in the air for the NBA Finals. For the Bucks, it's obviously imperative that the Greek Freak suits up if they want a shot at winning. It's also a must for us fans, because a healthy Bucks team versus a healthy Suns team can be an absolute banger of an NBA Finals. Here, I'll show you all the proof. The most noticeable change from this April matchup to the upcoming finals matchup is that Dario Saric was in the starting lineup for Phoenix over Jay Crowder, while for the Bucks, Dante DiVincenzo was healthy and starting over PJ Tucker. Devin Booker smooth as silk with the first hoop of the game. Giannis the quick answer bullying his way to the rack. Book two for two early with a short ranger. Drew Holiday got Mikel Bridges up in the air, getting the and one to fall. Chris Paul his first hoop of the game, a fallback jumper from the elbow, seen that a million times or two from CP3. And moments later, the second basket of the game from Chris Middleton, a tough pull-up baseline Jimmy going left. 
Chris Middleton is a truly polarizing NBA player for me. For the Bucks to win a championship, regardless of Giannis's health, they need Chris Middleton to be truly great. And during this playoff run, Cash Money has had truly great moments, including four games of over 30 points, six more with over 20, and five games with seven or more assists. Middleton, though, has also had seven games below 18 points, four games shooting in the 30% range from the field, and two games in the 20% range. That's uh, not great. What separates Chris Middleton from the upper echelon of NBA talent isn't shooting or pure scoring ability. He's got that. It's simply the consistency to do it night in and night out. Here's hoping for the Bucks' sake he puts together a sparkling six or seven game stretch. Midway through the first, Chris Paul took over for the Suns. After a Giannis dunk, the skate instructor stepping back in Brooke Lopez's grill for two. Then he crossed this way and that before hitting from the arc. And finally, a six point lead for Phoenix after... Chris Paul walks right into the triple. Chris Paul probably has the highest approval rating of any player left in the playoffs. I mean, the masses are praying that he finally gets his ring this season. Also, yes, basketball reference strikes again by suggesting Chris Paul's nickname is the Skate Instructor. Yeah, that's a miss for me, dog. Former Spur Bryn Forbes shot 45% from deep during the regular season, and he connected on his lone make of the evening here in the first. Jay Crowder off the bench in this game with a successful deep launch, but Notre Dame alum Pat Connaughton given an eternity from the corner, splashing to give the Bucks a one-point lead through 12 minutes. Cam Johnson a quick flurry to start the second, a floating right-handed banker from the block, then hustling hard off a brush screen to find an open look from three. Torrey Craig has played about 13 minutes a night in the playoffs. He hit a good looking corner three in transition. Oh, hey, look, a another, another sidestep pull up mid range jumper from Chris Paul. Giannis was just three for nine from the field in the first quarter, but you knew that wouldn't last. A swooping right handed finish for two. Moments later, a slice and drive to the rim for a good looking right handed flush. Jay Crowder, his second triple of the game from the short corner. Mikel Bridges with his first activation of the game, a short range dribble pull up. Campaign off the bench with a great look at three like seriously nobody defended him like i could have made that shot milwaukee come on in the playoffs only 10 percent of deandre ayton's shot attempts have come from the mid-range but my guy has a decently silky stroke from that spot although he is shooting over 70 percent from the field in the playoffs so maybe he doesn't need those jumpers Booker back on the board with a hard dribble and pull up from mid, then sandwiched between Giannis having a basic finish at the cup and pulling off a pretty nifty step back from the post, Devin with a smooth running finish from just outside the paint. I haven't talked much about Devin Booker to this point in the video, so let's take a second to do that. Simply put, Book has been a stud since entering the league in 2015. His career average of 23 points a game is already an impressive stat, but the last three seasons he's jumped up to 26 a game on 48% from the field and 34% from deep. Not too shabby. After scoring 70 points in a loss back in 2017, Booker insanely got the reputation as a guy who put up empty stats on a losing team. Well that uh, yeah, that take hasn't aged great. Finally surrounded by requisitely talented cast, Booker has posted 27 points, 6 rebounds and 5 assists per game this postseason, including a pair of 40 point games. Oh, and he's uh, he's only 24 years old too. Just, just felt like mentioning that. To put a cap on the first half, Drew Holiday a deceptively tough spinning left hand hook in the paint, a corner triple from Mikel Bridges for the Suns, a lumbering finish for Brooke Lopez who had a very quiet first half, and a clear lane layup for Chris Paul to give the Suns a one point lead at the halftime break. Another good looking jumper by Ayton to open the account in the third quarter. Again, I'm super curious to see what DeAndre will do in this matchup against the Bucks. Bridges had a strong game in this one, his second three point connection thus far. An interesting note from this game, Giannis ended up shooting 9 for 10 from the free throw line and guys, watch his stroke, it actually looks good. That's definitely not the same guy we're seeing shoot 54% from the stripe in the playoffs. Ayton with some nice patience and footwork, operating from the post around Brook Lopez for two. Giannis on the other end around DeAndre with a stutter step into a finish, but Booker with a tough answer moments later, absorbing some contact and hitting the free throw line jumper. Down two now, Drew Holiday taking things into his own hands offensively. Holiday off the screen, connects on the triple. 41% three-point shooter. 
a good looking shot for sure. Buck's lead was expanded to three after Chris Middleton took a feed from Giannis for the easy layup. I'm very pleased to announce though, at this point, we had a campaign takeover. First, a tough lefty floater with DiVincenzo all over his back. Then a runner along the baseline from about 13 feet out is pure. Finally, Payne got all the way to the rim, no float necessary, instead of very smooth finger roll. Actually, we aren't done with the man. More from Spain without the S. Knocked down five threes. Cameron Payne loads it up from deep. He's the one. A super quick nine points from out of nowhere. It is a must in this video that we dive just a bit deeper on Cameron Payne. In 2018-19, Payne suited up in just 40 games with Chicago and Cleveland. He had signed a pair of 10-day contracts with the Cavs, and he was released after the second one expired. Following this season, he signed with the Toronto Raptors, but was released prior to the regular season. Payne spent a month in China in 2019 playing for the Shaanxi Loons, then joined the Texas Legends of the G League. Finally, Payne was signed by the Suns just prior to the bubble last season. He played in all eight games and was picked up again for the 2020-21 season. Flash forward almost a year and Cam Payne has averaged 10 points, 4 assists per game and will be playing a key role for a team in the NBA Finals. Ladies and gentlemen, never give up on your dreams. Be like Cam Payne. Despite Payne's heroics though, the Bucks with a run to end the third. Connaughton a banger from deep in transition from the left wing. Bobby Portis with two of his six points off the bench. And Middleton with a tough elbow jumper to give Milwaukee a seven point cushion. The ageless Jeff T getting things going in the fourth with a difficult finish going to the rim. Cam Johnson taking a feed from Chris Paul and slicing to the rim for the dunk. A possession later, CP3 an on point delivery once again to Cam Johnson, this time in the corner for three. Haven't talked about Paul as a scorer since the first, but a gnarly finish from the lane with Teague draped all over him. Drew Holiday an immediate answer for the Bucks though, walking into a super basic short range jumper. Milwaukee once again choosing not to play defense, not sure why, not a great idea. And Devin Booker measured, assessed, and hit from straight on. Watch this defensive sequence from DeAndre Ayton. Sticking on Giannis like glue, didn't get baited into a foul, moved his feet, that's good stuff. Chris Paul, his second triple of the game, pulling up off a screen going left, brought Phoenix to within three. But Giannis with a contested fall away right in Cam Johnson's face. Then Drew Holiday with two of his 25 on the game coming off a... W was that a poster? I think that was a poster. Either way, a grown man moved to give the Bucks a seven point lead. Okay, so earlier on, we discussed Chris Middleton and his struggles with consistency in the postseason. Well, copy pasta what I said about Chris and drop it right here as we discuss Drew Holiday. Holiday was acquired prior to this season to stabilize the Bucks' backcourt and be a reliable third option that former point guard Eric Bledsoe just wasn't. While Drew had a stellar regular season campaign, 18 points, 6 assists per game while making first team all defensive, his postseason has left some a bit unenthused to this point. Holiday has failed to reach the 15 point mark in 7 of 17 appearances this postseason and has seen his field goal percentage dip to 42%. His defensive prowess is what sets him apart, especially in a matchup against two prolific scoring guards, but the Bucks desperately need Drew Holiday looking less Bledsoe-ish on the offensive end. The Suns had an answer with under 5 minutes remaining in the game. Ayton a face-up jumper over Brook Lopez. Shortly thereafter, Booker with an uncontested flush off the quick push ahead by CP3. Chris Middleton with a brick for the Bucks. And Mikel Bridges once again ready and willing to shoot, converting from the corner off yet another Chris Paul dime. CP3 wasn't close to done facilitating in the clutch. Look at this ridiculous pass hanging in the air, flipping back over his head to Jay Crowder for the corner three to take the lead. This dude is a magician. Chris actually assisted on five straight makes for Phoenix. He truly had this game on a string, dropping off to a rolling DeAndre Ayton for the spoon-fed finish. Down to 90 seconds left, Giannis had gone four minutes without getting on the score sheet, so the Bucks went to Chris Middleton, who was hacked and sent to the line for two. After Middleton made both, CP3 was unable to drop a dagger from deep, and the Bucks were ready. Here's Holiday on the drive, jump stop, swings it across, open shooter Middleton, three-pointer, yes. Yeah. And that's why they call him Cash Money, with a K-H at the beginning of Cash, because his name is spelled, okay, you guys get it. This wild back and forth tilt wasn't finished with that shot though, y'all. Book on the drive, left of the lane, pull up, Cash Money. What in tarnation? Chris Middleton's nickname is Cash Money. You can't just hijack that and use it for Devin Booker. 
this is anarchy. Meanwhile, Giannis, not, not the best moment ever in his career, with a chance at a game winner, he slipped and fell on his face on the drive. Somehow the Bucks were awarded a timeout despite not having possession of the ball, but it was inconsequential as Middleton missed a potential buzzer beater. Oh, so, so the now NBA Finals matchup went to overtime just a couple months ago? Yeah, yeah, pretty telling, right? I told y'all this series could be a banger. Ugly start to the extra frame as Middleton turned the rock over, then Mikel Bridges left a good look from deep way short. Booker had a lane to the rim, but the former Defensive Player of the Year with a perfectly timed rotation for the acrobatic block. Weirdly enough though, Giannis actually began to cramp up after that block and had to leave the game. No, seriously, that was it for our guy. 33 points eight rebounds, one super painful leg cramp. Mikel Bridge is able to atone for his earlier miss with an impressive finish at the rim on the break. Without the G-man, the Bucks let Holiday work on the ISO, but his shot was sent by Bridges with yet another impactful play. DeAndre Ayton would convert a pair from the stripe, and after a Middleton missed layup, Devin Booker went to work on P.J. Tucker. Booker working on his former teammate on the crossover pull-up. Goes glass! Kiss it in! Only if it buys me dinner first, am I right? Bucks had missed six straight to begin OT. Thankfully, Pat Connaughton drained one from deep after a short scramble. PJ Tucker was silent in this game offensively, but as well known, the man never leaves the corner for a reason. Of course that shot was money. Now under a minute left, game still tied. Look at this old dude, Chris Paul. It's not gonna be easy here. Shot clock at six. Paul working on Middleton. Able to get a little crease. How about wow. that one ducked under his right shoulder? Like, what was that possession? Honestly. Not to be outdone, Chris Middleton showing off his bag in the clutch with a turn and burn over his left shoulder to tie it up. But the Suns with an answer for that answer. Devin Booker this time on his playmaking vibe. Drive and kick to a wide open Mikel Bridges who simply couldn't miss. No, actually though, he was 5 for 7 from deep in this game. Still time left on the clock though, a 3 point deficit for the Bucks. And there's a reason why Milwaukee is in the finals. Even without their two time MVP, they've still got the guns to get it done. Inbound, they free up Middleton behind the strike, knocks it down from deep. I can't stress enough how impactful Chris Middleton can be in this series. Onus back on Phoenix now, with no shot clock, with a tie game, Devin Booker going to work with time running down. Yeah, it, it didn't work. Holiday, no, you're going to have to score it on me. Book head down, fires at the horn. Oh, they get it off. They called a foul. Well, they called a foul on the shot attempt. Yes. Yes, they did. That uh, that was called a foul on the shot attempt. I'm honestly Mike Budenholzer in this moment too. I'm gonna be honest, we don't need to spend a bunch of time debating this call. This was a regular season game and both these teams have found their way to the NBA Finals. But not only did I not see anything worthy of being called a foul in this moment, Booker also released the ball well after time had expired. I said, we aren't debating this, stop it, Jay. Devin Booker did indeed knock down the first free throw before intentionally missing the second. Phoenix had four guys, Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, Mikel Bridges, and Chris Paul all crossed the 20 point threshold. Milwaukee got 33 from Giannis, 26 from Middleton, and 25 from Drew Holiday. But the Suns pulled off a fairly improbable one point victory in a late season NBA Finals preview. At this point in the video, I generally make a few comments on the legacy impact of the game we just broke down, but obviously we need to see how the finals match Matchup plays out between these two teams first. Instead, I will offer my loose prediction on how I think this series will play out. And I say loose because I really have no horse in this race. In my opinion, you really can't discount the fact that even if he plays, Giannis Antetokounmpo will more than likely not be 100%. Now Giannis at less than 100% is still a pretty darn good player, and if Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday play to their full potential, I mean it's a formidable three-headed monster. But in my opinion, the lack of consistency in this postseason from both Drew and Chris could be a killer for Milwaukee, as one or two off shooting nights in the finals could be the undoing. On the other side, Phoenix has been a much more consistent club thus far. Chris Paul has seemingly taken Super Soldier Serum to shake off his shoulder issues, and save for a missing pair of games to health and safety protocols, has been nothing short of amazing in rounds 2 and 3. Devin Booker shot poorly in the Clippers series, but has shown the ability to contribute even if his perimeter touches off. To me, the X-Factor of this series will be DeAndre Ayton. 
the big fella absolutely ate against the tiny Clippers front line in the conference finals, and he also held his own against MVP Jokic in round two. Milwaukee has the horses to potentially prevent him from making a huge impact, but if the two-man game with CP3 begins to dictate the flow of the game, I mean, we've seen it be nearly unstoppable. At the end of the day, both teams are great. We know this, they're in the NBA Finals. I hate making predictions for a series like this when I don't have a super great feeling either way, but I guess I'll say Suns win in six games. Please leave me a comment with your prediction for the series down below. For each game covered here on Basketball Cinema, I'll be giving out three awards, beginning with the Clint Hawkeye Barton Award for Most Underrated Performer. I don't care which goes to Cam Johnson. I haven't talked much about Johnson in this video, which makes him the prime candidate for the award. He put in 13 points on five of eight shooting in this game off the bench, and for the Suns in the playoffs, has put in about eight points a game in 20 minutes tonight. More importantly though, he's shot 45% from deep in the playoffs, which could actually make him the X factor in the finals. The Rick Dalton <laughs> award for most recognizable moment goes to Jeff Teague. Not for any particular reason, I mean, I mean, he had six points, four rebounds in this game, which is cool, but more specifically because every time I see Jeff Teague, I feel the need to pop over to his basketball reference page to see which teams he's played for in the current season. Nah, seriously, since 2016, Jeff Teague has played for Atlanta, Indiana, Minnesota, Atlanta again, Boston, and Milwaukee. That's a lot of teams and not a lot of seasons. And finally, the Mark Jackson with all due respect award for weirdest moment in this game goes to Suns commentator Eddie Johnson describing this weak flop attempt by Giannis. Well, he'll probably get on the Academy Awards for worst pitcher. <laughs> but um, great one, Eddie. See, because there's an Academy Award for best picture, so he turned it around and said worst picture. That is a great A zinger right there. This guy stinks! And that's it. The Phoenix Suns beat the Milwaukee Bucks 128-127 on April 19th, 2021. It was the second of two one-point finishes in the regular season between the two teams now meeting in the NBA Finals. If you enjoyed this episode of the show, please consider dropping a like down below, and if you can see yourself watching, Watching a few more of these or a lot more, well then I'd suggest subscribing. Yeah, might as well hit that button. Also leave me a comment on literally anything from this video down below. They all help the YouTube algorithm. Be sure as well to follow me on Twitter at jcanada10 to get a tease for next week's episode. But until then, I'm Jay Canada and this has been Basketball Cinema. Giannis also gave us his best playoff career uh, uh. over the past three seasons. The it's also been a journey, albeit a quite a two as he was acquired through draft rate. Oh my word. I'll point out one last time. DeAndre Ayton's shot have come from, okay. Although he is shooting from uh, deeper on Cameron. Oh wait, hold on.